The other day I drove past my neighbor's house and saw that they had torn down their deck and neatly stacked all the old wood out on the street. Seeing that, a quick do-it-yourself project came to mind. I had been wanting to build a small shelf in the garage that would hide and protect the pipes from my car as I pulled into the garage. Even with a tennis ball hanging from the ceiling, I had managed to bump into these pipes a few times. I spent the previous day running all the wood through the planer. So with some leftover plywood from another project and what I took from the street, this project wouldn't cost me anything. I picked out a few pieces of wood from my pile and decided to start cutting. I cut the 4x6s down to 2x4s and then cut those in half to use as my base pieces. Remember, I'm making this up as I go along, so there is no plan for this project. I took my ply sheet and cut three one-foot strips. The board was already four feet wide, so I will stick with that for my length. The next step is optional. But I had some wheels laying around, and I'm not sure where I got them, but I figured I would incorporate them into the shelf to make it even more mobile if I needed to get to the pipes and shut the water off to the house. I searched through my screw bin and found some screws that would not penetrate all the way through the board, and I mounted the wheels to one of the plywood strips. This piece would now become the bottom. So laying that piece in place, I take a measurement from the top of the base to the center of the pipes. Since I had enough plywood left over, I decided to make a back plate to the shelves. This step is really not necessary and is only for looks, and I recommend only doing it if you have enough wood. So from the measurement you took earlier, mark out a rectangle that will fit nicely around your pipes. I use a small roll of electrical tape to round my corners. Then take a drill and put a hole along your lines. This will allow you to start in the center with your jigsaw. Place your back plate on your base and make sure you don't need to make any adjustments. Now measure from the base to the top and cut your frame pieces from the 2x4s you cut earlier. Take these pieces and lay them down on your back plate and figure out how high you want your shelves using your back plate to ensure you don't cover or cross your opening. From where you decided you want your shelves, you are going to make notches on your 2x2s. These will be the slots for your shelves. In this step, you can use a dado blade, but I wanted to finish the project in under an hour, so I did not waste time changing out the blade. I just made multiple passes where I wanted the board notched. I raised the blade up about a half an inch and began cutting. Use your miter gauge to ensure 90 degree cuts. After all your legs are notched, grab one of your plywood strips and make sure that they all fit snug. After you mount your legs is not the time to find out your notches are too tight. Using a piece of plywood to set the distance from the edge of your board, set your first leg in place and clamp into position so you can flip it over and screw into place. Repeat this process to the other side of your backplate opening. As I said before, I am making this up as I go along, so at this point I decided to make my shelves only three quarters of the way across and leave the rest open for a wood bin. So now based on where you put your legs, measure the distance between the notches and cut out your first shelf. With the back plate laying on its side, take your bottom piece and screw it into your legs. Use a scrap piece of plywood to keep your space from the edge. Repeat this step to the front legs on both sides. So now you have something that has started to resemble a shelf. The next step will be to make the top shelf. It needs to cover the entire top except for the opening of the wood bin. So measure from the back plate to the front leg and cut your shelf's width. Once cut, simply screw it into the legs. Make sure it is flush with the back plate and flush with the front of the legs. On the side, maintain the width of the plywood so your side piece will set in with no lip. Now your side piece is ready to be cut. Take your measurements and cut to fit. You should have a nice half inch gap that the piece will fit snugly in once cut. You can screw this piece in, but since it will not hold any real weight, I am simply going to throw some brads in it to hold it in place. Now the frame in my wood bin. I cut two more 2x2s, two the height of my back plate, and cut a side piece the same height and the width of the bottom of the shelf. 
Like the other side, I simply put the legs in position, flip it over, and tack it into place. I place a couple of brads to hold it in place and then take some measurements for the frame. I want to be able to see all of the wood in the bin in case there are small pieces that are closer to the bottom. So I will simply cut a couple of small cross pieces to give it support. This way it will have that open look and I can see all of the wood that is stacked inside the bin. Since these pieces will be supporting a stack of wood, I screw them into place to ensure I maintain the shelf stability. For my center cross piece, I place it a little below the shelf so I can use a screw all the way through from the outside of the frame. Now that my frame is complete, I could call it quits, but since I know that every time my wife pulls into the garage, she will be looking at this shelf, so I've decided to take it a step further and dress the front of the shelf with a nice looking frame. I grabbed two more pieces from my pile of wood that I planed yesterday. These were 1x6 deck slats, and I picked a pair that cleaned up nicely. The rust holes from the nails were the only blemishes on these pieces of wood after I planed them. I measured the front of the shelf and cut my pieces to fit like a picture frame. Each board would have 45 degree angles and fit around the perimeter of the shelf. I set my fence at 2 inches and ripped each piece before cutting my angles. Okay, here I think I took it a bit too far. I broke out the router table and routed a cabinet style face to each of the pieces. So much for completing this project in under an hour. It is hard to see the design I created with the grain of wood here, but it will really stand out once this type of wood is painted. I lay the frame into position and tack it into place. Remember that if you want to maintain the ability to remove your shelf, you need to place a notch in your frame before you tack it into place. Here I have decided that I will never remove the inside shelf, so I plan on placing a frame piece across the front of my shelf. This piece needs to be flush with the top of the inside shelf and be wide enough to hide the wood bin frame centerpiece. I got lucky and my previous 2 inch cut did this perfectly. Using the last remaining pieces of scrap wood that I had already routed, I cut them to fit and tacked them inward with the design matching the larger opening. Okay, so that's it. I had fun doing this do-it-yourself project, and now I have a shelf that will help protect my water cutoff valve to my house and give me a little extra storage space that the pipes prevented. In an emergency, I could easily reach the cutoff valve or quickly roll the shelf away from the wall for complete access. So check back in a few years and see if I ever get this thing painted. That's a great idea. I will store my paint on it. If I ever hit it with my car, I can also claim that I crashed into somebody else's backyard deck. Thanks for watching and hit that subscribe button.